Hi everybody, my name is Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog dedicated to building science and fine craftsmanship. Speaking of craftsmanship, my main man, Bill Wood here. Thank you, Bill, for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Bill is a frame carpenter that does most of my uh, work. He does the rough carpentry on our houses, which is really the, uh, the structural framing on our houses. And Bill and I want to talk to you today about a particular product that we really like and the benefits uh, of that product. And today we're talking about timber strand headers and in particular why we use those over traditional uh, headers. So Bill, what, what are most people uh, using for headers in houses? Historically, the same thing we've always used for years. We dimensional lumber, two by tens, two by twelves, two by sixes and eights uh, with a piece of half inch plywood in between. Nailed together, sometimes glued. Um, we've also seen uh, some architects specking out, putting a piece of half inch foam in between them, which tends to work as well, mm -hmm. um, although it makes for a looser header. Um, we love these timber strands. They are they are great. They're dimensionally stable. They're super strong. We're able to use a smaller member uh, in place of uh, where, say, a 2 by 12 would go. Um, they're so square and, and, and nice and, and, you know, much easier to handle. Yeah. Cost savings for us also um, in terms of just cutting them to length instead of, say, cutting two 2 by 12s and a piece of half inch plywood, ripping it down as well and then putting it together, making sure it's square and straight. And you know, Matt, what, what typically happens on the job site, as we all know, is we have our lumber pile out there and uh, those 2 by 12s, they, or all the lumber comes out fairly wet uh, and especially if it's like here in Texas, it's so humid and it's so hot and the sun is just beating down and, and what happens is on the sun side of any piece of wood, it's going to start to curl up uh, as it dries faster on the top yeah. than it does at the bottom. Yeah. And, uh, and then too, when you have uh, a header in place that's already put together, when the sun hits it as it's already in place, it'll start to do the same thing. It wants to curl. Uh, it just dries out faster on one side than it does the other. Yeah, and from a builder's perspective, what, what Bill is talking about is things that are, are important during the frame stage, but really come into play big time after the air conditioning uh, goes on in the house or the heat gets turned on when the house is, t is finished. And dimensional lumber comes out to the job site, kiln drying typically, uh, but even kiln drying is, total, is not removing all the moisture from that, from that lumber. It's gonna come out at some ter somewhere between 15 and 17% moisture content, but it's gotta drop down a couple points to get to somewhere between 10 and 12% moisture content in that wood to hit equilibrium, which is where it's gonna stay for the next 100 years as, as long as it stays dry. And so one of the things that we see with dimensional headers is we see a lot of shrinkage that happens in houses. Uh, and that shrinkage is very noticeable at window heads. At the top of the window heads, uh, after a year or two years, a lot of times you'll see a 45 degree crack in that sheetrock. And what Bill is saying is that this timber strand header is really going to help prevent that. And I've found that to be true over the years as I've used these timber strand headers. Houses that we use them have a lot less of that. You're still going to have some shrinkage cracks in every house, but they're really reduced greatly, especially at windows uh, with these timber strand headers. Bill, let's go over to uh, an opening, a window frame uh, opening over here where we've, used, where we've used the timber strand header. Let's show the install and let's talk about a couple of uh, kind of practical things. Uh, from the framing side. Why don't you uh, tell us first of all, Bill, a couple of tips that you have uh, for sheathing on the outside. Well, again, to minimize the, the cracking and, and the shrinkage that, that we always have with that is guys always take your sheathing and when you install it from the outside, you never want to run your sheet over a door or a window running straight through. It's faster Totally, but it's always better to go ahead and notch your piece out. And what that does is it ties your kings, your cripples, your header, and your above cripple material uh, together, and it, it locks it in much better. And then I always urge the builder and uh, to to tell the sheetrockers to do the same thing, because whenever you have one solid piece of material, you don't you're minimizing your joints at your header location where you have the most movement. You got to think about the rate of expansion on a thin 2x6 versus the rate of expansion contraction on a 2x12 or a double 2x12 header. Yeah. So those are always areas. And then two, 
whenever your a door gets a lot of action, it's opened and closed, opened and closed, opened and closed for years and years and years, and that that wreaks havoc on on a on a wall system. So the more we can do to lock all that in together as one diaphragm, the better off our uh, our structure is going to be for the long term. Yeah, for sure. One other uh, one other thing I want to show you guys and brag about Bill for a minute here. Look at this cripple. If you can zoom down here. Um, this is the uh, window sill above us, this 2 by that's making the sill. I don't know if you could tell in the video, but it, it's got about a 5 degree bevel on there or so, uh, 5 degree angle cut. Bill's guys are cutting all of these uh, cripples with that 5 degree angle, and what that does is it slopes the sill for us automatically. We don't have to put a cedar shim down uh, prior to, uh, to putting our Tyvek uh, flex wrap, DuPont flex wrap uh, sill protector down. It's already pre-sloped. That's a great little uh, super easy tip that I highly recommend and we do in all our houses. Lastly, let's talk about uh, insulating these headers, Bill. If you, if you can scroll up here, this header is, uh, is made to fit in a 2x4 cavity, but we're framing with 2x6s. So we get the same structure here. This is bearing all the load for us, but you can see I've got a 2-inch cavity, and we want to insulate that um, rather than just filling that with 2 by material. So, Bill, how are we doing that? Well, we're taking two uh, layers of our 3 quarter inch rigid foam, and uh, that gives us an inch and a half, and then one layer of half inch OSB sheathing. And uh, that fills our cavity nicely. It doesn't take any time really to just rip all our foam, set it in place, and then it, a little strip of OSB, that locks everything in. And when that's all put together, it's just so nice, and it's a good thermal break. And, and, uh, and basically, I believe that that, uh, that three-quarter foam is R4 uh, for a three-quarter inch of foam. So now I've got an R8 insulated header, which makes a big difference. On, on these wall cavities, two by six walls, that's an R19 wall. We're also using three-quarter inch foam on the outside of this house. So now we've really got a good uh, insulated header. Uh, we're reducing the thermal bridging in this house, and of course it, it's strong um, and is, is really reducing our, our drywall cracks in the future. We need the nail gun over here, Bill. Anything else you need to uh, add on that, Bill? No, I think it's great. We really like these timber strands. It really speeds things up. Uh, it, it makes for a nice, clean opening. Um, and, you know, now you look at it, it looks good, and prior to sheetrock, uh, you know, it still looks just as tight. Uh, you know, and just keeping a frame tight is the most important thing that we can do. Bill, you, you and your crew do a great job. Thank love working much. with you, brother. We love working with you. Thanks for joining me, everybody. We'll see you next time.